Thank you, uh, Ken Corla. And first of all, can I take this opportunity to wish the Minister well in her new role? It's a huge undertaking, and I wish you the very best, Minister. And while I've heard people um, speak about rural affairs being in with uh, the rest of your department, I have no doubt, but um, a good Manahan woman will see to it that uh, rural affairs does not take second place. So as far as um, this piece of legislation before us today is concerned, first of all, can I see that I am pleased to see that the PUP payment is put on a statutory footing. That means it will now be a social insurance benefit within the social welfare code. However, by putting the PUP on a statutory footing, uh, in my opinion at least, that means it will come under the remit of European legislation on the coordination of social security. Now, this legislation, the most recent uh, iteration of this legislation, was put in place in 2004, and all exportable benefits are covered by this legislation on coordinating social security benefits. It doesn't change the level of the benefits, that's up to member state, but what this piece of legislation does is it puts rules in place to govern what happens to those payments when a person exercises their freedom of movement. That's one of the four freedoms under the EU. So we have a right to travel from one member state to another. And in this context, I'd like to quote for you Article 64 of the legislation, which speaks of unemployed persons going to another member state. Now, there's quite a bit in it, and I'm just going to read some of it, uh, but these are the pertinent bits. And they talk about an unemployed person uh, who satisfies the conditions of the legislation in the competent member state, that's Ireland, for entitlement to benefits, um, and who goes to another member state. Uh, and what they say is that that person um, going to another member state uh, shall be subject, uh, sorry, shall be entitled to benefits for three months. Now, they obviously, within seven days, have to register for the fact that they are looking for work. But the point I make here, Minister, is that there is a seven-day period during which a person travelling from one member state to another who is on an unemployment benefit cannot have that benefit terminated, cannot lose their benefits. Now, Minister, I fully understand that the Department of Social Welfare has to protect its finances, but equally, it does not, under EU legislation, have the power to terminate an unemployment payment when a person leaves their own country to travel. At that point in time, no member state has the power to do that. So, yes, those who travel have obligations when they travel, but equally they have rights. And it's up to the member state to make sure that those rights are in place. And I'm just wondering, Minister, if we had somebody, let's say, from France living and working here, who became unemployed, uh, was on the pub payment, and perhaps had to go back for a family occasion, a funeral, a wedding, whatever it might be, for three or four days, went to France and came back, would their payment be stopped? And, and something tells me that under European legislation, that could not happen. So I think that's something that needs to be looked at. It's not directly related to the legislation today, but it's a really important part of uh, the public discourse on this issue uh, right now. There is also the situation, mem uh, Minister, if you're on a pension, you can travel to another member state for a week or a month, and you can still you receive your pension there. Now, that's fine, that's part of the legislation. But if you're on a pub payment, you can't leave the country at all and keep your payment. This payment is given to those who, through no fault of their own, lost their jobs 
uh, because of measures taken by government to close businesses or to tell people that their place of work was closed. Yet these people cannot leave the country for any purpose. And I think this is discriminatory and it's penalising people who already find themselves in a vulnerable position. Now, once again, you know, I'm not talking about a free-for-all here, and the state has an obligation to ensure we all abide by the rules and that there is no unfairness. But I'm just asking, why are we singling people on the pub payment out? Why those people specifically? You know, I know many of those people myself. I, they ask me, what have I done to deserve this kind of treatment? And to be perfectly honest, Minister, there are very few people on the pub payment who will be going abroad on holidays, unless perhaps they have booked and paid for those holidays with their after-tax income beforehand. But if a person goes abroad for a family reason, for example, why are they penalised? I'm not suggesting we have no rules or guidelines, but I'm saying that if somebody leaves the country, that in itself should not be a reason to stop the payment. Now, many of my colleagues have spoken about those who work in the arts and creative industries, the music industries. Uh, this, this sector is suffering hugely uh, and are not unemployed as such. It's just they have no possibility to work. They didn't lose their job. Their jobs were closed. They were closed down by the state, and we all recognise uh, this had to happen. But an issue for many in the music industry is that many um, are actually self-employed. And Minister, as of now, it seems to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that only 2018 accounts are taken into consideration when assessing the level of the pub payment. So that means some people are arbitrarily being cut out of pub or are receiving lower payments than in fact they should be receiving. If somebody started a business in the middle of 2018, um, their income is considerably lower than what it was in 2019 or the beginning of 2020. Or if somebody changed businesses, and I've come across at least three people in that situation who changed businesses, uh, let's say they were in another business or they were employed and that was terminated in 2017, and they started out in 2018, and now their pub payments have been cut. So what I want to ask, Minister, is if a person can produce accounts for 2019, if they submit them to revenue, is it possible that those, um, I see you nodding your head and I'm absolutely delighted to hear it because that's really good news for people because it takes the arbitrariness out of that decision making. But I'll wait till you confirm that that's the case. So um, just one or two other anomalies, they've been raised by my colleagues and I know you've heard them before, but the reason you hear them is because we hear them and people come to us uh, who find themselves in these situations. You've, you've heard many colleagues speak of the over 66s, uh, those who are self-employed, those who own pubs, uh, those who, for example, drive coaches and minibuses. Pubs are still closed. People cannot work. Those who are in the coach and minibus industry rely largely on foreign tourists. And uh, while indigenous tourism is picking up, and I fully support the call to holiday at home, but very few of us will be using those coaches or those minibuses. And it looks like it will be at least 12 months or nine months before that industry begins to pick up again. These people, some of them over 66, cannot access uh, a pub payment, uh, even though they work and they pay their taxes. So at a time when there, you know, we're looking at uh, maybe increasing the retirement age, it's, it's very mixed messages to say that if you're over 66, you can't receive it. But if uh, 
we, we at the same time are looking at uh, increasing uh, the retirement. Finally, Minister, can I say that I support the amendment from my colleague Michael McNamara on the issue of seasonal workers. I think they have to be taken into consideration because, as you and I know, tourism couldn't survive uh, without seasonal workers. And like my other colleagues, I'd like to thank the department officials, and this is genuine, because their very efficient work and processing cases needs to be recognised because I'll tell you when a citizen is in trouble and something is dealt with quickly it makes a big difference. Thank, Thank you, you Deputy Harkin. Deputy Fitz